a remote Arctic town with an international airport that was once a US airbase. Welcome to the very strange world of Kangashisuak. When Denmark was occupied during the Second World War, the US military took over the security of Greenland and urgent planning began to construct an airbase. This location at the end of the long Sundra Strumfjord was chosen for its topography and stable weather. As a way station between the US and Europe, it became home to thousands of military personnel. Indeed, the Americans remained here throughout the Cold War and early warning radar stations still dot the landscape. The airbase closed officially on the 30th of September 1992 and upon handover to the government of Greenland the name was changed. At present Air Greenland's only all-year international route departs from here. The flight to Copenhagen uses the airline's only Airbus A330 but of course nobody flies to Greenland with the sole intention of visiting Kangashusuak. So everybody has to change planes here and that can often mean spending the night. The airport canteen here is a very busy place catering not only to transit passengers but also hotel guests, all the airport workers, school children. It is in fact a hub for the whole community. But all of that is about to change. In 2024 new airports are due to open in Nuuk and Ilulisat, heralding international flights to and from the country's capital and its most popular tourist destination. Another quirky fact is that Kanga Shisuak is at the centre of Greenland's largest road network. But don't get excited. Whilst you can clock up a few miles on the gravel tracks here, they don't actually take you to any other settlements. The nearest town is Sisimut. You'll need to hike 150 kilometres to get there, but it is recognised as one of the world's great wilderness treks. Just watch out for the muskox and the caribou. Simon, yeah. what is the correct pronunciation of the town? It's difficult in English. Kangerslussuak. Kangerslussuak. It means uh, big fjord. In Danish, uh, Sønderstrøm. There are about 450 people. Say. How many musk oxen are there living around the town? There are about 25,000. Thousands upon thousands of musk ox somewhere out there. I love your birds. Is that from Canada? I don't know exactly uh, where it's from, but it's old. It's old enough. <laughs> you can only just see it with the naked eye, but over there you can catch a glimpse of the ice cap. This is the only place in Greenland where you can actually drive to the ice cap. From way up here you can see why this was the perfect site in the whole of Greenland to construct the runway required for a military base and later an international airport. This sign is probably the most photographed landmark in the whole of Greenland. The signpost used to stand outside this building, which was called the Danish Hotel. When Scandinavian Airlines opened the first polar route between Los Angeles and Copenhagen, the planes couldn't make it all the way, so they stopped here, and transit passengers would get out and enjoy a meal in the Danish Hotel. It also became the base commander's office, and you can still visit his office in what is now the town's museum. To construct the base in the shortest possible time, the Americans flew in prefabricated blocks and they've certainly stood the test of time, although they probably won't be winning any design awards. There is a supermarket, so very little fruit or veg today, but surprisingly, you could buy a guitar. There is a bus service. Stay on the bus for 20 minutes and you'll go right back to where you started. I'm from Denmark. I arrived in Greenland on the 7th of February this year. I have been driving the bus for nearly eight months. And when I came here, Bailo Meter was standing for 142,000 kilometers. Now it's standing for 186. So I have been driving about 45,000 kilometers in eight months here. 
this is around the world in a small community like Kangaroo Swan. Just going round and round. <laughs> round and round and round. <laughs> the nature here, this is world class. And the possibilities for going tramping, walking, call it what you will, this is enormous if you are fit enough. This is in the middle of nowhere. But the lifeline here is the flight coming every day from Copenhagen. And in the future, this flight will be cancelled from here because it's going to land in Nuuk and in Iluistad. I hope that we are some people here who can stand together and help this place staying alive. What do you think will happen when the new airport is open? I don't know. I think that it, it will be closed slowly. <laughs> I don't know. It's very hard to know what future lies in store for the community here at Kangushisuak when the international airports open at Nuuk and Ilulisat. All of the employment here is related to either the airport itself or to catering for the tourists who stop over here. The town and its surroundings may look a little inhospitable, but it's a very friendly community here, so I really hope that it survives against the odds.